Did you know that criminals all over the world started to use Dali masks after watching Money Heist? And that Bella Chow song has a deep history behind it? What was the hardest scene to film on Money Heist? And why did that scene with underwater gold bars make the VFX team go through real hell during post-production? Hi, I'm Dylan. And before we talk about behind-the-scenes secrets, we will check on key elements that made Money Heist so popular. Dolly masks and red jumpsuits. Perhaps some of you didn't know this, but as La Casa de Papel Season 1 was broadcasting in Spain, it was a failure. The show was nearly cancelled. The number of viewers was so low that the cast never even dreamed there would be a Season 2. But after Netflix bought the series, things turned around for good. Or better say, for very good. The show's name changed to Money Heist, and it soon became one of the most popular series in the world. But what was the true reason behind the fans' love? There are several reasons, of course. Great storytelling, memorable characters, terrific actors. Though the showrunners love to call attention to a very non-obvious reason, which is the money heist symbolism, or more specifically, the dolly masks and red jumpsuits. They simply stick in people's minds. And despite the fact that some of you might think they were used just as a cool disguise for the heist team, in fact, they have a pretty significant meaning. Check this out. According to what the professor said in Season 1, his team's actions are all about the resistance, indignation, and skepticism towards the symptom, right? Well, pretty similar philosophy to the Spanish artist Salvador Dali, right? Some of his early 20th century art was created in order to support the movement against modern capitalistic values. And the red color was chosen on purpose, too. According to Google Arts and Culture Center, the color red was used in several countries in different periods of time throughout history as the symbol of fighting for freedoms and liberties. In Money Heist, red jumpsuits also serve as an equalization element. In a sarcastic way, though, as both the hostages and the robbers wear them. This image of a man wearing a red jumpsuit and dolly mask became so memorable that even criminals all over the world started to use it during robberies. And not only criminals, rebels at different political protests used the masks and jumpsuits too. In July 2019, the people of Puerto Rico congregated in the streets wearing the same masks and demanded the local governor to resign. Well, this is the real power of cinema and TV. And don't forget about another great element of the rebel symbolism, which is... Bella Chow Song Yes, the show creators always considered this song as part of their Tribune Rebel symbolism. It may surprise many American fans, but this song is a big deal for European people, especially for Italians. Why? Well, let's see. If you were attentive enough, you may have noticed that Bella Chow plays during key moments of the show. We hear it for the first time in the scene where Paco Tosa's character Moscow reaches soil while digging the exit tunnel from the Royal Mint. Though the song has its screenplay arc much earlier, in the very first episode. That's right. When the professor explained his plan to the heist team, he remembered his grandfather who fought against fascist Italy. And Bella Ciao, or Goodbye Beautiful, is a famous Italian folk song, which was the anthem for the anti-fascist resistance and, soon after that, it became famous worldwide as a hymn of liberty. See the connections now, can you? Though the song was originally created sometime before World War II by Italian women who worked hard in the fields and wanted to lift their spirits, lyrics were later changed in order to capture the partisans' fight against fascism. Show creators indeed put some hidden meaning between the lines in Money Heist, no doubt. But way more secrets will be revealed during our discussion of the filming process. Stay tuned to find out what scene turned out to be hell for the VFX team. Filming at Duomo Square, Florence, Italy The first day of filming as a Netflix show happened to be in the heart of Florence, and it showed how much people loved Money Heist and its cast. There were thousands of people watching the filming process. The set looked more like a stadium or a giant theater stage than a series set, and yet everybody stayed deathly silent, staring and waiting for the magic to happen. Pedro Alonso, aka Berlin, still remembers that day like it happened yesterday. I said to myself, okay, concentrate, zero eye contact until you're done. And we were about to finish the scene, I said to Alvaro, hey, Alvaro, let's go say hi to everyone. But that turned out to be a big mistake. As soon as they approached the closest group of people, all of a sudden more and more people who came wanted to meet them in person. It wouldn't have been a problem except that they still had to film more scenes. But after they'd made a connection with their fans, it was completely impossible to proceed with filming, because literally everyone from the crowd wanted to take a photo with or get an autograph of their favorite actors. Just look how many people were out there! 
The crew could do nothing else but get in their cars and drive away from the fans, who continued following them on foot for as long as they could. A similar story happened in Florence. The crew picked a much less famous location than Duomo Square, but fans managed to find them there too. Luckily, the team had learned their lesson. Do not talk to the crowd until filming is done. Things you can't buy for money. Before the show was bought by Netflix, it couldn't take liberty with a lot of things. For example, if the crew needed a view of the Philippines, they could only get it with the help of CGI. Because moving everybody to another country would cost a hell of a lot of money, which the showrunners just didn't have. But after Netflix became involved, money was no longer a big deal. For example, if the showrunners needed a Buddha temple in Thailand with elephants around it, sure, Netflix would give it to them. Or maybe the showrunners needed a military helicopter or even an island to shoot a scene on. No problem at all, because Netflix would cover all of that too. But what if the crew asked for tons of money bills coming out of the sky from an airship? Could Netflix solve that issue? Yes and no. Theoretically, the studio can give the team all the resources they need, but the technical issues were entirely on the director's shoulders. Of course, we're talking about that scene where millions of euros were rained over Madrid. That money was fake, obviously, but how did they get that footage? The director decided to use giant blowers that lifted the fake money bills in the air. The plan was good in theory, but kinda sucked in practice. The crew decided to grab the bills manually and throw them at the blowers, hoping to get them to fly in the air properly. But they didn't, and the filmmakers had to collect the bills from the streets with shovels and vacuum cleaners and throw them at the blowers again, and again, and again, and again. Dozens of shots were needed in order to get realistic footage of the bills flying down in the air, as if they were rained over from an airship. But unfortunately, the manual manipulations with the bills and blowers weren't the only problems. The real big problem was Mother Nature. When they finally got the fake money to fly properly, it started to rain, and hundreds of extras on the set didn't have any shelter. On top of that, the fake money began to get wet too, as did the entire set, which meant that the crew needed to dry both the fake bills and the square of Madrid. In moments like this, you can understand how hard movie making can be. The Ship of Lies Here's another hard scene on the list. Remember the moment where the heist team reached international waters in North Atlantic by ship? It must have been really cold out there filming that scene, right? But actually, no, not at all. Cause that scene was shot not in the Atlantic, but in the waters of Thailand in terrible conditions. It was insanely hot out there. More than 105 degrees Fahrenheit. The blazing sun almost made the professor faint. All the actors were rehearsing shirtless and hoping the horrible day would end as fast as possible. But the craziest detail about filming this scene was that the actors had to pretend they were cold. In no way could they break a sweat out there because the camera would see it. When you dream about becoming an actor, you never think about the possibility of getting sunstroke in the open sea. The hardest scene to make. Denver did a great job stealing gold from the Bank of Spain while underwater. Though, have you ever wondered how a scene like this is filmed? According to the film crew, the making of that sequence was a living and never-ending hell. Anything that could go wrong on the set definitely did. First of all, because the gold was fake, it began to float, so the crew had to drill it to the tables. But then, after several takes, the fake gold began to shrink because of the water pressure. The whole set was 6.5 feet underwater, which made the fake gold collapse. Besides that, there was another problem. The tables on which the gold was put on started to corrode, so the tables had to be polished to cover the blots. A new problem occurred every minute. After the crew somehow managed to film that scene, they found out that the gold looked bad on the final footage because the water pressure made it look completely fake. So they had no other option but to fix the gold in post-production, manually, shot by shot. Which made the VFX team really hate La Casa de Papel. But of course, despite the fact that it was a living nightmare to get right, the final result was completely worth it. Did you guys know any of these facts? Or maybe you can tell us about other cool behind the scenes details. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And for now, as always, stay safe and awesome.